To hear the story read to you, tap the orange button to read. Monsters Incorporated. Monster laughs. Sully was worried. As the new head of Monsters Inc., it was his job to make sure the power levels stayed high. But none of the monsters seemed to be getting enough laughs. He went to the laugh floor and peeked through a closet door. He saw Polly, one of his star monsters, sitting on a stool telling a joke to a little boy. Ah, I've heard that one before, the boy said with a yawn. Sully winced and closed the door quietly. He then saw Lanky emerging from another door. How'd it go in there, Lanky? asked Sully. The kid threw a glass of milk at me and then fell asleep. How do you think it went? Lanky yelled and stormed off. Hmm, this is worse than I thought, said Sully. At lunchtime, Sully and Mike shared a gooey pizza with extra tentacles. Mikey, we've got a power problem, Sully said. The monsters just aren't funny anymore. All their routines are old and dull. Mike thought for a moment. I got it, he said, snapping his fingers. I'll write some new jokes for all the monsters. I'll get them into tip-top comedic shape, Sully. Mike spent the next few nights burning the midnight oil, writing jokes, and inventing gags. He was cracking himself up. Hey, you think you're scary looking? I give ice cream a whole new meaning. Then again, kids aren't scared of me. I'm a monster who's 50% I. That's not scary, that's an eyesore. Mike performed a juggling act with chattering teeth. He burped out a beautiful ballad. And he wrapped up the performance with the perfect impression of a bowling ball. After he finished his act, Mike handed out comedy scripts to each of the monsters. Just perform the jokes exactly as I did, and I guarantee you'll have those kids falling out of their beds. Back on the laugh floor, the monsters were excited to try out the new comedy routines. Mike and Sully congratulated each other. This is going to be great, boasted Mike. But things didn't go so well. Why did the one-eyed teacher creature have to close his school? Polly asked a little girl. Because he only had one pupil. The girl gave Polly and his 16 eyes a blank stare. Ricky was having problems of his own. The chattering teeth were too small for his mouth. Spike was trying to do the bowling ball routine, but he got stuck to the floor. Ugh, they're terrible, said Mike. I need to teach them how to perform the jokes just like me. But Mike, that's the problem, said Sully. The other monsters can't perform the jokes just like you because they're not you. Mike sighed. Okay, I'll come up with another solution, he said. The next day, the monsters arrived on the laugh floor looking miserable. It was so much easier being scary, said Spike. We'll never be funny again, cried Lanky, running away. Whoops! Lanky slipped on a banana peel and flew into the air. When he landed, he looked like a pretzel. Lanky and all the other monsters howled with laughter. That's it, Mike exclaimed. Instead of copying me, you just have to be yourselves. Then the laughs will come naturally. Mike helped each monster come up with his own jokes. He told Polly to pop out some of his eyes. Oops, sorry. Don't mean to roll my eyes at you, said Polly. Perfect, Mike exclaimed. Then Mike helped Ricky come up with a joke about his teeth. Have I told you how much I hate flossing, said Ricky. Every time I do it, I find chunks of tooth fairy and dentist. With Mike's help, Spike came up with a great top 10 list. 
and the number one use for a spiky monster, an instant marshmallow roaster. Even though Lanky already had his pretzel routine, Mike helped him make the most of his appearance. Yes, it's true, said Lanky. I invented skinny jeans. A few days later, the laugh floor buzzed with activity. Behind closet doors, kids roared with laughter. Great job, Mikey, said Sully. I didn't do anything, Mike said. These guys are naturals. As Mike headed toward a door, Sully stopped him. Hey, Mike, what do you call a green monster with one eye and a big mouth? Unbelievably good looking, Mike asked. Hilarious, said Sully. The end.